Flipping over to the last page, page four, we have y equals to the power one half to the power of x plus three. So we'll start with the basic y equals one half to the power of x graph. That's our parent function we'll start with. And the plus three, all the plus three does is moves the graph up three. So if we take points on the graph, for example, this point right here, the y-intercept is at one. So one moved up three would move to four. And then here's a point right over here, uh, the point negative one, two. And so if we move that up three, it would move to this point right here. I'll make a little dot right there. And then the negative two, four point would move up three, one, two, three. So it would move up here. Also, the uh, horizontal translation has been moved up three as horizontal uh, asymptote has been moved up three as well. So that's what the horizontal asymptote looks like. So join those points and you could move a couple of other ones up three. That's what the graph looks like. Now, the last example has more than one transformation. So that's why I will use a table. And so the two multiplied by the whole function means it's stretched vertically by a factor two so all the y values are doubled the x minus four that's a horizontal translation it's been moved four units right so that affects x it moves it adds four to all the x's and the uh, minus 10 the end means the graph moves down 10 so all the y values will be subtracted by 10. So, subtracted by 10 means that that horizontal asymptote is no longer on the x-axis. It would be 10 below that, at y equals negative 10. And so, I will take all my y values and multiply them by 2. That's the vertical stretch by a factor of 2. And then subtract 10 from all of them. The x's, all I'm going to do the x's is move them 4 to the right. So, I'm adding 4 to them. So, negative 3 plus 4 would be 1. And then the y values, I'm going to multiply them by 2. So, 8 times 2 is 16, and then subtract 10 would give us a 6. So 1, 6 is a point on our new graph. Uh, negative 2, we're going to move it 4 right, remember? So we add 4 to the negative 2, so the y x coordinate would be 2 there. And then the y value gets multiplied by 2 and subtracted by 10. So 4 times 2 is 8, minus 10 would be negative 2. And we'll plot 2, negative 2. Negative 1, we're going to add 4 to it, so that gives us an x-coordinate of 3. The y, we're going to double it, gives us 4, and subtract 10, which is negative 6. So 3, negative 6 is a point on our new graph. The 0, we will move it 4 to the right. 0 plus 4 is 4. Uh, 1 multiplied by 2 is 2. Subtract 10 is negative 8, so we'll plot 4, negative 8. And the uh, 1 here, we'll move it. 4 to the right, so 1 plus 4 is 5, and a half doubled is 1, subtract 10 is negative 9, so we'll plot 5, negative 9, and join them with a smooth curve. And in this last example, uh, I always also want to discuss what the domain and range are of that last function. Now, for an exponential function, it goes forever to the right over here, and it goes forever to the left. There isn't a, hor a vertical asymptote. It kind of looks like it, but there isn't. It does go forever. Like way over here, the graph still exists up there somewhere. It's pretty high, but still exists above those x values. And so the domain for that function is the entire set of real numbers. And that didn't come out very good. So this should be and R. The range is a set of all real numbers with the restriction that the y values have to be greater than negative 10. There's a horizontal asymptote here at negative 10 and the curve comes down and gets closer and closer to it but never actually gets a y value of negative 10. So the y values are always just greater than negative 10. And that's the end of the PowerPoint.